Hey guys, what's going on? I'm back for another Netflix review, and today I'm gonna to be talking about The Starling. The Starling is an American drama that tells the story of a woman named Lily and her husband Jack, who are both struggling to cope with grief resulting from the death of their infant daughter. Jack is committed to a psych war due to a crisis situation that was related to his daughter's death, resulting in Lily being the sole income provider between the two. Things go like this for about a year or so, when a Starling settles in, in a tree outside of Lily's house and begins to aggressively stake a claim in the territory. In between the constant back and forth feuding that happens with Lily and the Starling, she goes on a journey toward recovery and moving past her grief, allowing her to rediscover her will to live and her capacity to love once again. Or at least that's how it should be. The truth is, while I understand the story of this movie is a difficult situation that unfortunately many people today find themselves in, and it's hard to find any one specific way to properly address the death of a child, I don't think it's addressed particularly well in this movie, and part of the reason for that is that the characters don't behave and respond to this crisis in the way that I think they should. Melissa McCarthy plays the lead role of Lily in this movie, and I have to say, it's nice to see her back in a more dramatic role this time around. I do think that her overall performance is good, but the way her character is written is a bit of a different story. On one hand, I do think that her character is very strong, in the sense that she's able to do normal things like pay the bills, hold down a job, mow the lawn. She's just able to do a lot more things while still allowing herself to feel vulnerable and depressed over her daughter's death. In that regard, I think her character is well done. But on the other hand, her relationship with the Starling is little more than a constant source of distraction that is keeping her from achieving the goal she's supposed to achieve, which is moving past her daughter's death. Anytime she starts to feel somewhat normal throughout this movie's events, that Starling is always there to rear its ugly head and rile things up all over again. I thought the movie was going to use the Starling as a way to teach Lily that life is going to throw obstacles at you no matter what circumstances you find yourself in life, and it's up to you, along with the help of others, in order to find creative ways to move past those obstacles. There is a little bit of that in this movie, but for the most part, it just shows Lily going the blunt force way of doing things, which is trying to eradicate the Starling through any means possible, and that only adds more to the pain that she's already experiencing in her life. And after all of that is said and done, she has a sudden epiphany that forces her to consider her actions and have a change of heart, and the way it all plays out makes no sense sense. Chris O'Dowd plays the other lead role in the form of Lily's husband Jack, and like with Melissa before him, I think he did a pretty good job in the role overall, but make no mistake, his character also has his fair share of flaws. It is clear right from the beginning that his character carries a ton of mental baggage with him wherever he goes, and he has no idea how to deal with it all. Unlike Lily, who tries to cope with their daughter's death by living a normal life again, Jack is unable to do so. He runs, he hides, he deflects, he uses pretty much any tactic you can think of that doesn't require him to face the problem head on, which ultimately is the only way you're going to be able to resolve something like this. I think that part of his character was very well done, but then there are other parts to his character that I thought were really weird, like how he's able to have a normal, legible conversation with Lily whenever they have their family days at the psych ward together, but then there are other times whenever he'll call Lily in the middle of the night and he won't say any words at all, he'll just sit there and listen to Lily talk about any random thing that comes to mind, and I don't understand why he goes from being talkative to non-talkative with the same person. Person. By far the biggest problem that I had with Jack as a character though is how the movie so flagrantly tries to connect his career, which is an elementary art school teacher, as somehow being the main reason why he's so negatively affected over his daughter's death. As an educator myself who's worked in elementary schools for five years, this annoyed the hell out of me. And the reason why it bothers me so much is because Chris's daughter was an infant at the time of her death, but the movie keeps connecting her to all of these elementary school references to kids who are like five and six years old. I I understand that the death of a child is a serious matter for anyone involved, teacher or not, but the point that I'm trying to make here is that the death of someone in their infancy is a much different scenario than the death of someone who's in early childhood, and the movie makes no attempt to differentiate between the two. This leads me to talk about the biggest problem that I have with this movie overall. I think that the dramatic elements that are set in place are fine, or at least competent for the most part, but the amount of inappropriate humor that's just stuffed all over the place just boggles the hell out of my mind. There is a grave overabundance of forced jokes that simply have no place being in a movie concerning the death of a child. Balancing drama with humor is one thing, but there is no balance to be found in this movie. Its attempts at comedy are laughable and ruin any sort of serious message it's trying to convey. Larry Fine and his vet clinic bears the brunt of most of these bad jokes, and yes, seriously, his name is Larry Fine. He's named after a Three Stooges character. Ugh. <sighs> 
I'm not going to reveal all the jokes in this review, but a couple that I'll mention concerning Larry Fine and his vet clinic, involving a dog humping a character's leg on more than one occasion, a guy crying over his sick cat to a really unrealistic degree, and then Larry Fine performing surgery on a pet and then requesting that he gets alcohol so that it helps him concentrate. Dear God, what the hell am I watching? It's a shame that there's so much silly stuff being thrown in the camera at once because the dramatic elements that are there when done right are truly emotional to experience. One example I can think of is when Lily is rearranging all the furniture in her house, including the furniture that's in her daughter's bedroom. And even after removing her daughter's crib, she comes back to find spots on the floor that were left there by the crib's legs. And she tries to rub out those spots on the floor because she doesn't want to be reminded about her daughter's death. That scene was fantastic because we got to see a realistic and heartbreaking way of how Lily was coping with the death of her daughter. And I was really hoping to see more scenes like that in the movie, but it was more interested in being stupid instead. There are many examples of scenes that are excellent in terms of the dramatic weight that they carry, only for the movie to shoot itself in the foot at the very end of those scenes in a vain attempt to be funny, which destroys any sort of value those scenes may have had. One example of a scene that really pissed me off in this regard is when Jack is given a big speech to everyone at the psych ward to talk about the advances he's made with regards to his mental health. Most of the dialogue in that scene is good at first, but then he starts talking about his wife and then laughing, and I wasn't really bothered by that at first, but then he starts referring to her as my wife. I actually rewinded a couple seconds and turned on subtitles because I felt like I was missing something at that part, and it turns out Jack was actually referencing Borat with that tone of voice in the middle of his dramatic speech, and that made me so pissed off at the writers of this movie. I was like, why? Why are you guys intentionally trying to sabotage your own movie? Are you kidding me with this? The tonal shifts in this movie are all over the place, and the topic of grief is never addressed properly with the starling that's supposed to be featured so prominently throughout the movie. The symbolism of the starling in this movie is surface level at best. Characters state out loud, as if the movie thinks its audience is too stupid to understand, that starlings build nests together, drawing an obvious parallel between Lily and Jack and how they started a life and a family together. That aspect would have been fine if the starling was shown to be having any sort of positive impact on Lily throughout the movie, but that doesn't happen until the last 10 to 15 minutes or so. Additionally, Lily repeatedly demonstrates that she's unwilling to learn her lesson when it comes to coping with her grief. An example of this is when she buys poison bird seed to kill the starling, and she accidentally kills another bird instead. She does develop remorse for this bird, which led me to believe that she was going to try and find a more cooperative and less aggressive way of dealing with the starling, but the very the very next day she's back to being angry and hateful towards the bird, so in the end, nothing was changed. And I know this is going to sound like I'm nitpicking at this point, but it really has to be said. Why is the Starling completely computer generated? I would understand if it was just computer generated during the parts where it's flying in the air, or would it would have been otherwise difficult to capture a live Starling on camera, but during the parts where it's just sitting on a post or it's inside a building, it, it's like, come on guys, like there's really no excuse. Penguin Bloom is a movie that kept popping up in my head the entire time I was watching this one. Everything that the Starling fails at, Penguin Bloom does a much better job at addressing, both in terms of its serious subject matter and how a bird is used to cope with that subject matter. I highly recommend that you watch that movie if you were disappointed in this one like I was. Overall, The Starling is a smaltzy dramedy that does have something to say about how one copes with grief, but it gets lost in a sea of slapstick that dilutes its messages at best and trivializes them at worst. If you enjoy seeing Melissa McCarthy in more dramatic roles and you're looking for a movie that addresses dark subject matter in a lighthearted way, you might enjoy this one to some degree, but personally, I just couldn't get behind it. I was absolutely shocked at all the positive user reviews this movie is getting. It's definitely not Melissa McCarthy's worst movie by any means, that honor goes to Thunder Force, but its attempts to meaningfully engage with its thematic material gets lost on me when it's clearly evident that I would rather tell jokes instead. So in the end, that's how I choose to treat this movie. As nothing more than a joke. Anyways guys, it's going to wrap up my review of The Starling. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the American horror movie, No One Gets Out Alive. Bye bye!